last week when i was mentioning about resurrection and glorification i was focusing only on believers then that was a possible question what about the resurrection of unbelievers so <clears throat> it was very relevant uh, even as i told last week uh, i was just having some thought to explain that also but then i thought again i'll uh, i'll go from the main topic and it will take more time classes will be extended so i thought i'll skip off but uh, it was not god's plan that we should leave that therefore came the question we will look to that i'm not going to give you a, a, a <clears throat> extensive study on that but just give you a brief uh, explanation at least we can have some idea about it in john's gospel chapter 5 verse 28 to 29 we see the words of the lord mentioning about the resurrection the lord says do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation that we can see it speaks about two resurrections resurrection of life and resurrection of condemnation again in acts chapter 24 and verse 15 we have the words of paul apostle paul during his defense at jerusalem before governor felix he says about resurrection acts chapter 24 verse 15 he says i have hope in god which they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and the and the unjust there also paul speaks about two resurrections resurrection of the of the just and the unjust now resurrection is mandatory it's a must because if god wants to establish his initial plan and purpose concerning man there should be a resurrection when we say when we use the word eternal life we mean the life that we have in christ jesus living with god in heaven okay in that sense eternal life is the life with god in heaven okay but in the sense of unending life in the sense of everlasting life or unending life both saved and unsaved have unending life everlasting life okay for the believers this is eternal life with christ with god in heaven and for others it is eternal damnation or eternal life in hell fire with satan and his angels in fact all the people have eternal life okay that's how god has created us when god created man we see in genesis chapter 1 that he formed man out of dust and breathed into that <coughs> form of dust to make it a living soul so <coughs> so man is a combination of created material that is the uh, the dust or the soil and eternal material that's the breath of god it's a combination amalgamation of temporary and eternal since man holds that eternal faculty in him he is an eternal being everyone whether it be saved or unsaved man is an eternal being eternal being in the sense man has a beginning and there is no end for god god is an eternal being god has no beginning no end okay that's the difference uh, man as an eternal being means it uh, man has a beginning and then no end god as an eternal being god neither has a beginning nor has an end okay uh <clears throat> so 
well if anybody hearing me is a student of mathematics uh, they can understand it by just mentioning two terms that we used in mathematics my subject was mathematics so i love mathematics so when we say line in mathematics when we say line we put two arrows at both ends that means it goes to both ends unending if we say a part of line we say line segment line means unending goes to both sides okay then we have the expression of ray ray means it has a beginning but no end it goes forth okay that's how it is god is represented by line with no end going both sides unendingly and man is represented by ray which has a beginning but goes forth without end okay so connect uh, uh, the existence of man and god with uh, mathematical expressions okay <clears throat> coming back uh, to our topic well as i told last week when god created man god has a plan for him death was not there in the initial plan he was not forbidden of eating from the tree of life but only forbidden from eating of the tree of good and evil so what god intended was that man should not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil but eat of the tree of life and get confirmed his uh, <clears throat> innocent state sinless state and continue in the garden of eden for some time then after his term on earth is finished as an innocent person without sin he would be translated with a heavenly body will be taken up from earth to heaven with a transformed translated body probably that would have been the initial plan no it's not mentioned the word of god don't ask me from where i got it okay from all these uh, biblical principles god's plan when we study we can understand we can infer that it would have been the plan of god now that man has eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil having become a sinner he was forbidden of eating from the tree of life he was cast out then god prepared a salvation okay god arranged a god has arranged already a salvation in the past eternity god knowing the end from the beginning since god is an omniscient god he knew what the choice of man would be so god has already prepared a way of salvation for him god has given him salvation through salvation initially his soul is saved and then he continues in the world in his unredeemed body when he die or when the coming of the lord happens this unredeemed body will pass through translation or transformation and he will achieve that body which man would have received at the time of translation if he had not eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and had eaten of the tree of life okay for that resurrection is a must resurrection is mandatory okay now the second aspect even though god has prepared a salvation many are majority are the people who would not accept it okay god has said clearly that uh, way to heaven or eternal life is narrow and few are those who walk in that way to destruction or way to hell is wide and many are who walk in that path okay so majority of the people will not believe even though god has prepared salvation for everybody even though it is the will of god or it is the expectation of god that 
everybody should come to the saving knowledge. Okay, it is God's longing that nobody should perish. All should believe in the Lord and become children of God. There is provision for every man. There is provision for every man. Unfortunately, by the effect of sin or by the, the force of uh, evil spirit or force of satanic power that is working within man, many will not accept Jesus as their personal savior. Okay? So, they have paid heed to the voice of Satan. They did not hear the voice of God. Therefore, they should get a due punishment in hellfire with Satan. Even John, in Matthew chapter 25, we read that hell was initially created and intended for Satan and his angels. It was not created for man. It was for Satan and his angels. Since man has hearkened, heard the voice of Satan, since man has rejected the voice of God, the voice of salvation, ultimately he also will end up in the place which is prepared for Satan. Okay? That is the place of punishment. To reach there also, there should be a resurrection. Okay? So, in order to enter into heaven, to receive the reward, there should be a resurrection. In order to enter into hell and undergo punishment for disobedience and sin, there should be a resurrection. So, resurrection is mandatory for all human beings. Or translation is mandatory for all human beings, either to enter into eternal bliss in heaven or to enter into eternal damnation in hell. Okay? So, resurrection is a must. Either for reward, to, to live with God, or to be punished, to be with Satan, resurrection is inevitable. Now, coming to uh, the order of resurrection, or the step, or the phase of this, uh, resurrection, in 1st Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 to 24, we read about different phases of resurrection, order of resurrection. resurrection. But each one in his own order, Christ, the first fruit, afterwards, those who are in Christ at his coming, then comes the end. There we find the, the, the step or the arrangement of Resurrection, the order of resurrection. Then we can see at least four. If you have a, a quick look on that verse, you will see only three. But I I prefer to divide it into four to show four phases of resurrection. One, Christ, that is first. Then we see that Christ, the first fruit. Then afterwards, those who are in Christ, we need to stop there. Afterward, afterward, those who are in Christ, that is the rapture, when Christ comes in the midair, the church will be resurrected, that is the rapture. Then third, at his coming, that is the second phase of the second coming, Christ coming down with uh, his saints, his glorious appearance, mm -hmm. during which uh, the third resurrection will happen, third phase, then comes the end. The final resurrection, that is the second resurrection, we say, happens after millennial kingdom of, God, of Lord Jesus Christ upon earth, or the thousand year rule, after the thousand year rule. Okay, so we have four steps or four phases of resurrection. <clears throat> One is Jesus Christ, he is the first fruit, and then saved the saved ones at the rapture of the church. And third, the tribulation and Old Testament saints at his second coming. And four, Manila saints and uh, great white throne judgment, all unbelievers. Okay, these are the four <coughs> <coughs> different phases of resurrection. Okay, we'll look to that. A few verses we will look to. 
uh, first Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the first person to come back from dead, never to die again. Now, when we <clears throat> when we say about resurrection, we cannot include those people who were raised from dead by prophets or even by Lord Jesus Christ and also by apostles. Okay, there are many people, even the Old Testament during the earthly ministry of Christ and even during the early apostolic age, people who dead were raised from dead. Okay, that is not included as resurrection because all those who were raised in that manner, they died again. For example, Lazarus, okay, or the son of the widow of Naim, okay. So those who died, the Lord raised them up, but they died again. Even apostle, hmm? also in Old Testament, we see prophets raising people. All those who raised were died again, okay. So they did not receive a transformed body. They received the same previous body. So they were subject to death again. Okay. So when we say resurrection, we mean getting raised from dead with a transformed body that is no more subject to death. That is no more subject to material body. That is no more resembling the earthly body, but resembling the heavenly body. Okay. So Christ is the first person to come out from death, never to die again with a glorified body. Acts chapter 23, 26 verse 23, that Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So Christ is the first fruit who was resurrected from among the dead so that all other saints of Christ will also be resurrected. So Christ is the first to resurrect. That is the first resurrection, first phase of the first resurrection, resurrection of Christ, the first fruit. Then the saved at the rapture of the church. All those who put their trust in the Lord, all those who have accepted the Lord as a personal savior, they will resurrect at the coming of the Christ in the midair. We, we call it rapture. That, that's a, even the second coming also have two phases. First phase, the Lord will come only up to midair when all the saved ones, the church as a whole, will be caught up to midair to, to the skies to meet Christ. Okay, that is rapture. At that time, only those who died in Christ shall rise. Those who have accepted Lord as a personal savior, those who have become a new creation by accepting Christ as the personal savior, those who have lived in Christ, those who have died in Christ, they will be resurrected at the first phase of the second coming of Christ. When he comes in the midair, the rapture happens. So rapture includes only the church, those who have accepted the Lord as a personal savior. We have uh, many verses. I'll just uh, show a couple of verses. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 17. <clears throat> For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ, dead in Christ, will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. That is rapture. Those who died in Christ. Old Testament people they are not considered as people who have died in Christ. Okay, only those who are the part of the church, those who have accepted the Lord as personal savior, 
from the day of Pentecost and till the coming of the Lord in the clouds, they are considered as the church. Again, we have in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 54. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will, rise, will be raised, uh, raised in corruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible have put on incorruption and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up. So there we have the explanation of those who are dead in Christ, they are resurrected, those who are alive at the coming of the Christ, they'll be transformed, they'll be changed, translated, and together they'll be caught up to mid-air to meet Christ. So that is, uh, <clears throat> first is Christ, then Christ, those who belong to Christ, then at his coming, the third aspect of that verse, at his coming, the tribulation and Old Testament saints at his second coming. Now, when we mean second coming, second coming to the earth, okay? Phases, first phase, he comes only up to mid-air, comes only to clouds, and the church will be caught up. There, the church will remain in, in the mid-air with Christ for seven years, during which period on earth there will be great tribulation. After the great tribulation of seven years, Christ will come to the earth with his saints. Okay? They have, there are two phrases. Christ coming for the saints. He is coming for the saints in the midair. His saints will be caught up with him and then he will come with the saints. That is the glorious appearance. Uh, Christ in his glory appear with his saints. Okay? So rapture, it's a secret coming. He's not coming to the earth. Nobody can see it. Only we hear the trumpet of the sound. Okay? The sound of the archangel and uh, transformation, translation will happen at that time. We'll be caught up. It's secret coming. And glorious appearing happens after seven years. After the tribulational period. Okay? So, when Christ comes at his second coming or comes to earth after tribulation, then uh, the third aspect of first resurrection, all those who have died during the seven years of great tribulation and all the Old Testament believers from Abel to all the Old Testament believers until John the Baptist. He is considered as the uh, uh, as the um, close of uh, the law, end of the law comes with John the Baptist. Okay, so right from Abel we say it Abel but Adam also is included. Okay, right from Adam till uh, John the Baptist, all the Old Testament believers, Old Testament uh, righteous people, mm, they'll be <coughs> caught, they'll be resurrected at that time, along with those who have died during the tribulation period. Now, that will be mainly for the Jewish people because church is not there. Okay. Gospel will be preached even during the tribulational period, but not the same gospel that uh, we hear. It's, it's mentioned as the gospel of the nation. Okay? So those who are saved or those who are accepted by God during the tribulational period, they will also include with the Old Testament people. Because mainly the tribulation is the time for Old Testament people or the Jewish people. For the Israel, church is already caught up. So it's for the Israel. Now, 
after tribulation, when the coming of the Christ of Christ happens, uh, the Old Testament believers, as well as those who died, the Jewish uh, believers who died during the tribulation period, they will they will be raised up at his coming. We have uh, the explanation in in Revelation chapter twenty, verse four to six. And they saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witnesses to the Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received uh, his mark on the foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is first resurrection. First resurrection includes the first fruit, Christ, then those who belong to Christ, the rapture, then the Old Testament believers, and also the tribulational believers. All these together form the first resurrection. Okay. Then this speaks about what we have seen in Revelation. Revelation 24 to 6 speaks about tribulational believers. Those who put their trust in Jesus during the tribulation and died for the sake of uh, general gospel, not the gospel that we have. Anyway, for the sake of Christ, we, we read like that. Then the Old Testament believers also will be raised at that, that time, the coming of the Christ. We read that in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. At the time... Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble that speaks about uh, trouble of Israel, Jacob, that is great tribulation, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. So something that has never ever happened, the great tribulation. And at that time, your people shall be delivered everyone who is found written in the book. So the deliverance of the people at the end of the great tribulation. Okay, then verse 2 says, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, even though Daniel says this together, the second will not happen at that time. The first only will happen. Speaks about two resurrections. Now, even the Lord also said it together, but it will not happen together. Even though it is said together, it will not happen together. You should understand that. Okay? Jesus said it together. We saw Apostle Paul said it together. Okay? Here Daniel also is saying it's together, but it's not together. Some to everlasting life. That happens at the second coming of Christ, second phase of the second coming of Christ, Christ coming to this earth for a thousand year rule, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That will happen after the millennial kingdom. That will happen after a thousand years, not happen together. Okay. <clears throat> after the uh, after the tribulation period is over, Jesus Christ returns, he will then resurrect the Old Testament saints. Every believer from the time Adam until the second coming of Christ will have been resurrected at that time. Okay. <coughs> so we can know that the first resurrection, Revelation chapter 50 verse 5 and 6, 20 verse 5 and 6, says about first resurrection that we saw earlier, includes rapture, tribulation saints, and Uti saints, Old Testament saints. Okay. 
Then comes the fourth, is the great white throne and millennial saints. <clears throat> Here you have to understand, keep in mind that the resurrection of the millennial saints is not specifically mentioned in the word of God. Okay. This white throne judgment, the resurrection, end resurrection, and then it says about those who are resurrected will stand before white throne, the great uh, judgments, the white throne judgment of Christ. Okay. It's not the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment seat of Christ is the reward giving for the believers that happens in, in mid air. That's what we believe during the, when there is tribulation period down on earth, we have that uh, uh, reward distribution and all in mid air. Uh, that's what we believe. Some people believe that it happens afterwards also. We don't know when it happens. Anyway, <coughs> that will be happen. Then uh, <coughs> those who died during the uh, millennial kingdom, their resurrection is not mentioned. All those who have died in the millennial kingdom, they are righteous people. Okay. Again, a lot of prophetical aspects. I don't want to confuse you much. Just know that there is thousand year reign of Christ upon this earth. Those who enter into the thousand year reign, they all are righteous. But those who born during the thousand year reign, okay, they will not believe in Christ and they are the people who will be attracted by Satan when he is released after a thousand years bondage, released for a small period. He, he gathered all the people for him and there, uh, there he brings them against Christ uh, for war and then Christ destroys every, everybody. Okay, that is the final war that we see. Now, those who died during thousand year period, they will also be resurrected at the end of the thousand year period or millennial kingdom. But they will not stand before the white throne. Only sinners will stand before white throne. At white throne, nobody will be saved. They will be judged only to confirm that they are sinners. They are not uh, eligible for, uh, for the kingdom of God they will be sentenced to eternal hellfire. So all those who appear before the white throne will be sinners and they will go into eternal damnation. But end resurrection, in the end resurrection, not only that the people will stand before white throne, but also the people who died during the thousand year will also be resurrected. But nothing is mentioned about them in the Bible. Okay, we believe that they will be resurrected and they will join with Christ and only sinners will stand before uh, the white throne. Mm? That is what we see in Genesis, in Revelation chapter uh, <clears throat> 20 verses 11 to 14, we see about the final resurrection or the second resurrection. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from those who faced the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And they saw the dead, small and great, standing before God and books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book, in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it and death and Hades Deliver up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. The death and the Hades were cast into the lakes of fire. This is the second death, and anyone not found in found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. <clears throat> now, the resurrection of unbelievers, as I told you will take place after a thousand year reign of Christ upon earth and all unbelieving dead who have uh, ever lived will be resurrected and judged at this time. So this is the final resurrection. Okay, we have, we say there are two resurrections, first resurrection and second resurrection. 
resurrection for good or resurrection for eternal life resurrection for damnation okay so first resurrection or the resurrection for life will have three groups that is new testament believers at the rapture then the millennia the the uh, uh, great tribulation believers who died during the tribulation period and then the old testament believers from adam till john the baptist all these three together form the first resurrection now even though it is not mentioned in the second resurrection also there are two phases those who have died during the millennial kingdom thousand year reign they are righteous people they will also join with the lord and others from uh, <coughs> cain till the last person who was born in the millennial kingdom they will stand before the white throne they'll be uh, sentenced to death they'll be sentenced to eternal hell fire and that is the second death hmm? which was second death eternal separation from god death is not cessation death is not losing the existence sometimes when we say the use the word death we mean losing the existence but in spiritual terms in biblical terms death is not the the cessation of existence death is not termination the the final termination from existence okay in biblical terms death is separation from god okay that's why the lord said you should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the day that you eat you will die and adam and eve ate of it they died doesn't mean that the life was lost but the spiritual death happened and they were separated from god so that is the first death separation from god okay but god has given us an opportunity to receive life through lord jesus christ okay all those who receive life through lord jesus christ they still have eternal life and they can be with the lord those who have not accepted jesus as their personal savior okay they will have they will pass through experience of second death that means eternal separation from god okay first death even though it was separated from god there is a possibility for them to return to the lord through christ jesus through the salvation god himself has arranged that is the first death but the second death is eternal separation from god there is no more chance for any of them to return to the lord they'll be eternally in hell fire that is second death so death in terms of bible is separation from god not uh not uh, cessation of uh, existence or termination from our existence okay <clears throat> again we see a couple of other resurrections which are also not included in this i can just show out two two more resurrections because when i say this sometimes you may come to know about this and then you say that oh um i did not mention about that there is more resurrections you missed it at all so you should not feel like that so i would like to mention that also additional resurrections you know resurrection of some old testament saints in matthew chapter 27 52 and 53 during the time of the death of lord jesus christ we read that the graves were opened and many bodies of saints who had fallen asleep were raised 53 and coming out of the grave after his resurrection they went into holy city and appeared to many so this there is a difference in opinion about this some people say that it is physical resurrection they died again but i believe it is not physical resurrection it is spiritual resurrection because if it was a physical resurrection they could not remain in the grave for another 3 days until christ was raised Mm-hmm. and also the word used uh, 
they went to holy city and appeared to many okay that word is not just uh, meeting somebody not uh, making uh, others see us that word appeared is uh, appearing in a special way or in a in a way that they were not seen before and then all of a sudden they they come to their vision that is the word used there for appearance so it was the spiritual uh, resurrection that's what i believe okay <clears throat> well um, uh, <clears throat> we know that old testament believers also are saved by the death of christ at the cross okay they had been given different means for the remission of sins particularly the sacrifices even right from the beginning the idea of sacrifice was there you remember when adam and eve committed sin they became naked we see there that they had made their own arrangements to cover the nakedness uh, uh, you know sewing aprons uh, i used to say that mini skirts for them with uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, leaves of fig tree okay that's what we read there but that was not sufficient for them to stand before god later we see that god has covered them with the skin god has given them a covering of skin okay a, an animal was killed its skin was taken out to cover their nakedness it was a sign and i'm sure adam and eve understood they may not know that christ is going to die after probably i just say 4000 years but still it was a sign of covering sin and they knew it was the means to make them stand before god that's why when uh, cain and abel brought offerings we read there that abel brought uh, a, a, a a lamb hmm? from the best of his uh, uh, his herd okay his flock so right from adam's time people had an idea of sacrifice through which they can please god so throughout the uh, uh, the history of mankind they have the idea that sacrifice is the means to to please god to cover their sins to make them acceptable at least to some extent okay then after that we see when the law was given they had given all the instructions how to offer sacrifice the different types of sacrifices and the the uh, the procedure of offering it the means and the meaning of it all these are mentioned in leviticus chapter 1 through 5 and then we have the explanation thereafter okay uh, well all these sacrifices i believe even right from that animal which was killed at the garden of eden to to take up the skin and cover adam and eve right from that animal and throughout the ages all the animals that were killed and sacrificed to please god for the remission of the sins for pleading forgiveness before god represented the final death final sacrifice of christ at the cross okay so when christ died at the cross when christ died at the cross all these sacrifices that they offered to the lord for the remission of sin has received power of his redemption through which they all became acceptable before god okay so even old testament people also 
are saved are made acceptable for god by the death of christ even though as a shadow they were sacrificing various animals they were offering uh, sacrifices to the lord they all done it as a shadow of the final sacrifice that god has proposed to perform at the cross the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world both ways uh, for the coming generation and for the previous generation so it it works both sides both ways okay so it is this that that initiated the redemption of old testament people therefore at his death few of the old testament saints were resurrected showing that christ is the first fruit and even old testament believers also will be raised according in the order that through christ okay now we have in romans chapter 4 that christ died for our sins our iniquities and he was resurrected for our justification okay he bore our sins and our punishment upon cross it is his death removed our punishment and it is his resurrection that proclaimed us righteous before god our justification happened because of his resurrection now even at the death of christ through all the old testament sacrifices received the power because all those sacrifices represented this death this final sacrifice so all those old testament sacrifices were made live or it received power and that worked out for the remission of old testament sins but they had to still wait in the tomb until the resurrection of christ through which the justification is accomplished therefore they appeared after his resurrection okay this is my explanation okay if you think it is fitting you can accept or you can think as what you like okay uh, i am not uh, doctrinating it this is what i believe this is what i feel comfortable so they were back in the tomb till the resurrection and the resurrection has um, justified uh, even their sins also so that they are accepted so there is a resurrection at the death of christ which is a sign of old testament resurrection at the coming of christ which is which is not actually included in the other resurrections okay then we have another resurrection mentioned in revelation chapter 11 7 and uh, verses 11 and 12 about two witnesses who would be preaching and witnessing christ during the first half of the tribulation period three and a half years of the first half of the tribulation period and the and the middle they would be killed we read the revelation chapter 11 verse 7 when they finish their testimony they will be testifying the lord for three and a half years when they finish the testimony the beast that descends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them overcome them and kill them they will be killed that's what we read verse 11 now after the three and a half days the breath of life from god entered them and they stood on the feet and great fear fell on those who saw them and they heard a loud voice from heaven saying come saying to them come up here and they ascended to heaven in clouds so that also speaks about another uh, resurrection and ascension that uh, happens to the two witnesses who will come during the time of tribulation period okay these are exceptional it also include in the uh, all these are included in the first resurrection okay so that's all about resurrection now let's thank god for helping us or enabling us to be part of the first resurrection 
so that second death will not have power, influence, impact on us. And it is removed by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ at the cross. Let's thank God for that. May his name be glorified.